Hi, I'm Rob. Welcome back to Carlit Brook. Let's take a look at part two of the control panel and also some other developments that have happened on the layout. So the panel is now in situ, has been fixed, connected up and is in operation. Let's take a look at some of that wiring. So if we look at the back of the panel, we can now see that it's in situ and is now wired up to the distribution points. Let's take a closer look. Wiring up the panel has been a big success. And one of the key factors I believe for that is having detailed out and put in these spreadsheets. Uh, this is just using Word Excel. The layout of each of the tag strips, what goes to which point of the tag strip, what goes where, colour coding it, and then being able to follow that during the actual wiring up. As we can see here, this is the control panel uh, schematic for tag strips one, two, and three from left to right. And this is showing each of the individual tags, numbered one at the bottom to 28 at the top for each of the tag strips, and then two columns. The left column is where the wire coming from the switch on the actual control panel comes to the tag strip and is soon to be color coded. And to the right, where the wire goes off from the tag strip on the control panel to the distribution board. And again, using color coding on here. You can see that on the left hand one, tag strip one, that's pretty full. That's got the two controller inputs uh, that are coming in on numbers one to 10. And then we have distribution switches um, from AD1 starting at 11 up to D4.4. The middle control panel strip, tag strip two, we've got some spares. So these have been identified and we'll show you shortly. So not everything is um, compact on here. Try to put it in a logical fashion, but we can start to see on the middle one where we've got actual points and we can see where we've got the top and the bottom of the individual points and the wiring that's going through to that. The right hand side's tag strip three goes more from switches again on the actual panel in blue and going to the corresponding distribution. Here is a corresponding schematic for the distribution board. Here again, we've got three tag strips, left A1, middle A2, and the right one is A3. Again, we've got one to 28 coming up from the bottom of the actual individual tags on those tag strips. And now the left-hand column for each of these is from the layout. So these are the wires that are coming in from whether it be the actual track or from the points, etc., And then where they go off to the control panel on the schematic we saw before. So each one here actually tells you the individual tag strip to go to. So if we just use one as an example, if we look on the left-hand side, tag strip one, we look towards the top at tag 28. From the layout, that's S14, that's actual section 14. And to the control panel, that goes to tag strip three and actual tag five. So therefore, being able to follow this through has made wiring the whole thing up pretty straightforward. So if we actually look here on the control panel itself, on the left hand side here, we've got tag strips two and one. Yes, when I designed this, I wrote the tag strips looking from the back from left to right. When it's in situ, you're actually looking at in reverse, but numbering does help. 
The other thing here is that furthest away from me is number one tag and the closest towards me is number 28. But again, having the schematics, it really does help um, to reference and make sure that you're wiring it up correctly. So tag strip one is the one on the right that has various um, black wires which are going from the actual control panel down through the hole at the back there and then they come up into the actual distribution board tag strips which we'll see in a minute. Um, and then the wires that are going off to the right, the reds and the blacks, etc. They're actually going off to the switches on the panel itself. The other thing just to reiterate here is for each of those switches, what's also in situ are the LEDs, um, which go to individual tag strips and then with the relevant resistor and going off to the board itself. So that when the isolating section is on, and isolated, there's no LED displayed. When the section is free and power is to the track, then the LED is illuminated, which is already through testing, making controlling um, a lot, lot better than any of the previous layouts. So now looking at the actual distribution uh, tag strips, these are receiving wires from the control panel, which we just saw, and then the wires are going from here to distribution on the layout, whether it be isolating section or points. So again, we can see here how we've got the individual ones all the way going up. Again, one at the bottom. Here I've put on the notation as well to help. Um, drilled individual holes so the wires are coming up try and keep this nice and neat and tidy um, any fault finding making that a lot easier and then underneath keeping it as tidy as we can with cable ties etc and either going to the left around the layout or to the right of the layout if we look over here on the other tag strips these are predominantly points so what we've got here is from the actual point itself we've got the three colored the gauge master um, wire um, which comes with a red, green and black combined. The three wires for the points found that so much useful to actually be wiring points. So that's coming in. So black is either left or right, red the opposite and green is the common. And then coming over here, we've actually got the wires here that go off to the actual uh, control panel, etc. What we've also got with the common return is we've wired that up to a capacitor discharge unit. So we have that through here. So all the wiring to the points come in here and then goes off to the layout. If you can see here, actually what I've got is where we've got a double point, so I, we've got a crossover. We've got a right and a left hand um, going from one track to another, two points here. So how I've wired this is on one switch, but making sure that obviously the throw of the switch works in tandem i.e. when you're switching from the outside track to come to the right, the other point correspondingly switches at the same um, time. This has also been used where we have long passing loops um, for sidings, etc., where we have a point at the beginning of it, a point at the end, and again, doubling up. So quite a few of these points have actually doubled up here, coming to one switch, and we'll see that in operation in a bit. So that's just looking at the wiring of the panel. The panel is now in situ. Um, as I've said on previous videos, I'm not an electrician. Uh, that's not my trade, but I'm pretty proud. This is quite complex. Um, there are a various number of points, but this is the first time I've actually bothered to take the time to do it properly. And every single point is now wired up and electric on this lower storage level the isolating parts and with corresponding LEDs. So let's take a look at some of that. As I said on the last update in January, the next stage was to complete installing the actual panel and then to do extensive testing. That testing has now been completed. During the testing, I actually found that I had three dry joints on the switches on the panel itself. So that's where my soldering had not been up to the standard that's required and therefore there was not good electrical contact and when testing running through there was no power going to the track. Um, one of the big mistakes I made to pass on 
was that I presumed I'd done my wiring incorrectly, even though I've just gone through and explained that. So I started thinking, oh, I must have put a wire up, taking, tracing the wiring through, only to realize that it was a bad soldered joint. So lesson learned there is that when you plan things out, the yes, okay, doubt, but also trust in your own ability that you have actually said that A goes to B. And therefore it could be that it's a bad connection. It's not that you've made a horrendous mistake. The other indicator was out of all of the sections on the track, if only one is wrong, you can't have got the wires wrong. So if something's going to A and something's going to B, you can't have got them the wrong way round because otherwise they'd both not work. Um, but again, late at night, logic doesn't always go through the gray matter. So testing has gone really well. Uh, the operation is good. It's actually working better than I thought. Um, with the way that it's laid out, it is logical um, and that has been pretty easy to use during running sessions, etc. There are on here two through running lines. Remember, this is the lower level. This is for storage. Um, the trains from here will go up the ramp to the upper level, which is yet to be constructed, and then they will return back down. Uh, it's a bit of an out and back. Uh, the top one will have a continuous loops, but also it's designed that actually the trains can um, disappear um, out of the scenery and then be sent all the way back down. So in essence, as much as you can run round and round um, tail chaser, then this is an out and back design. However, as I've said, there are two running lines on this level. Um, and we'll see some videos of trains and the operation of the points, etc. So let's have a look. So for the first example, to run a train completely round, um, if we start off here, we can see we've got AD4. AD4 is the um, complete loop from here. We're going to come through over point P10. Here is an example where we've got two points on the same switch, so that's through. We're going to bring it through running th line A5. The light is on showing that's clear. Bring it up through here, AD3, and then we can actually bring it down via P13 through A6, AD4, and that gives us a loop. What we're actually gonna do for that is bring a train out of one of the sidings, and we're gonna bring that out of S1 at the top here. So let's go and do that. So the last thing really to update on is the installation of this Smart Home Security Made Easy system, aka a monitor video recorder, albeit without any hard drive, that comes with four cameras that enables me to be able to view the lower level once the next level is put on and I've got lights, etc. So this has been installed as well. So let's take a look and see what this is doing for the layout. So what the system comes with is four of these cameras, uh, which have got plenty of cable with them for what I needed, been able to fix in situ to the supporting um, piece of wood that's gonna hold the next level. As I say, there are four of these. Um, this all came with the kit. I didn't need um, actual recording. You can add that onto this kit. 
but found this was pretty reasonably priced with a monitor, uh, the base unit and these four cameras um, off Amazon for a very reasonable price. There's quite a selection on there as various YouTubers had mentioned. So it's a case of just going and looking to see what's right for your budget, how many cameras you want, what specifications, etc. Uh, but this is working for me. So what we actually have here is the monitor itself with the four cameras in situ. They're basically at the four corners of the layout. Uh, while I'm showing you, let's just get a train running. You can see if we look at the top left camera, we can see a train departing. If we come to the bottom left camera, we should see it appear from the left. There we go. That'll now go round to the right. We will move to the bottom right camera. The incline is in the way at the moment. I think I'm gonna reposition this camera. But there we can see the train has now appeared. It's still in shot on the bottom left. And if we look to the top right camera, we should see it now coming into um, view with the lights on, etc. And we can see that that comes around and then it will go back into the top left camera again as it goes round. And there we have it. So this has been working really well because once the top layer is in place, of course, the viewing will not be quite as good. This allows me to actually see where I need to stop the trains. I'm gonna put some indicators. There's some markers on the board at the moment, which is just visible, um, looking through these actual cameras, knowing where they are. I'm gonna make that a little bit more prominent so you can see where to stop trains, etc. And once have the LED lights around um, before the top layer is put on, I'm pretty confident A will be brighter than it is now, um, but B, that's gonna be really useful. So again, really pleased with this unit. I've seen other uh, layouts that have adopted this type of thing. Again, wanted to put this in place before we get carried away with the actual scenic layer that's going above, but pretty pleased with all of this. So just to round up for this update, here we have the control panel in place. And to the left of it, we now have the CCTV. Um, I've also put in on the bottom left there, you can see a fused neon, um, just power coming from a 13 amp socket to that distribution um, switch bit at the back. What that basically means, and I really liked it on the other one is, I just have that one switch. Once I switch that off, all the electrics to the actual layout itself are off. So uh, that's easy to switch on, easy to switch off, and that includes the CCTV as well. Um, we've got the gauge master controller down there. The, the other thing with that uh, system, the CCTV, you can see there's a mouse. Uh, so when it boots up, you can actually go and click on the cameras. You can just have one camera. You know, there's a host of functions that come with it. But basically, as you can see there, I just want the four cameras showing so that when I'm operating the layout, I can actually see, which is really good. So progress has been made, as you can see, the panel is now in place, all the testing has been done. Um, the next stage already moving on to now is completing this um, wood level that's gonna support the next level all the way round the layout, it's three quarters at the moment, hopefully getting on with that um, this week so that we can start making progress once that's in place all the way round, put the LED strip light in, um, that's going to light up the lower level and then actually the baseboard constructs construction finally what is going to be for the scenic level so exciting times coming ahead so thank you very much for watching this update um, please subscribe please click the bell to get the updates um, please comment as appropriate really appreciate any comments thoughts etc uh, thank you for watching and i'll catch you again soon take care Bye-bye.